Bruce Lee, born Lee Jun Fan, was a Hong Kong and American martial artist, martial arts instructor, actor, director, screenwriter, producer, and philosopher. He was the founder of Jeet Kune Do, a hybrid martial arts philosophy drawing from different combat disciplines that is often credited with paving the way for modern mixed martial arts. Lee is considered by critics, media, and other martial artists to be the most influential martial artist of all time and a pop culture icon of the 20th century, who bridged the gap between East and West. He is credited with promoting Hong Kong action cinema and helping to change the way Asians were presented in American films. Bruce Lee was the son of Lee Hoi Chuen, a Cantonese opera star based in British Hong Kong. He was born in San Francisco in 1940 while his parents were visiting the city for his father's tour abroad. The family returned to Hong Kong a few months later. He was introduced to the Hong Kong film industry as a child actor by his father. His early martial arts experience included Wing Chun, Tai Chi, boxing, and street fighting. In 1959, Lee moved to Seattle. In 1961, he enrolled in the University of Washington. It was during this time in the U.S. that he began teaching martial arts, later drawing significant attention at the 1964 Long Beach International Karate Championships in California. His students included famous celebrities such as Chuck Norris, Sharon Tate, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In the 1970s, his Hong Kong and Hollywood-produced films elevated the Hong Kong martial arts films to a new level of popularity and acclaim, sparking a surge of Western interest in Chinese martial arts. The direction and tone of his films dramatically influenced and changed martial arts and martial arts films worldwide. He is noted for his roles in five feature-length Hong Kong martial arts films in the early 1970s, Lo Wei's The Big Boss and Fist of Fury, Golden Harvest's Way of the Dragon, directed and written by Lee, and Golden Harvest and Warner Brothers Enter the Dragon, and The Game of Death, both directed by Robert Klaus. Lee became an, an iconic figure known throughout the world particularly among the Chinese, based upon his portrayal of Chinese nationalism in his films, and among Asian Americans for defying stereotypes associated with the emasculated Asian male. Having initially learnt Wing Chun, Tai Chi, boxing, and street fighting, he combined them with other influences from various sources into the spirit of his personal martial arts philosophy, which he dubbed Jeet Kune Do. Li died on July 20, 1973, at the age of 32. Since his death, Lee has continued to be a prominent influence on modern combat sports, including judo, karate, mixed martial arts, and boxing, as well as modern popular culture, including film, television, comics, animation and video games. Time named Lee one of the 100 most important people of the 20th century. Chapter 1, Early Life Bruce Lee's father Lee Hoi Chuen was a famous Cantonese opera singer based in British Hong Kong. On December 1939, his parents went to Chinatown, San Francisco in California for an international opera tour. He was born there on November 27, 1940, making him a dual Hong Kong and United States citizen by birth. At four months old, the Lee family returned to Hong Kong. Soon after, the Lee family led an unexpected four-year hard life as Japan, in the midst of World War II, launched a surprise attack of Hong Kong in December 1941 and ruled for four years. Bruce's father, Lee Hoi Chuen, was Cantonese, and his mother, Grace Ho, was of Eurasian ancestry. Lee's maternal grandfather was Cantonese and his maternal grandmother was English. Lee's maternal great-uncle, Robert Hotung, was a successful Hong Kong businessman of Dutch Jewish and Cantonese descent. Chapter 2 Career and Education Chapter 2 Section 1, 1940-1958, Early Roles, Schooling and Martial Arts Initiation Lee's father Li Hoi Chuen was a famous Cantonese opera star. As a result, the junior Lee was introduced to the world of cinema at a very young age and appeared in several films as a child. 
Lee had his first role as a baby who was carried onto the stage in the film Golden Gate Girl. He took his Chinese stage name as Lit. Lee the Little Dragon, for the fact that he was born in both the hour and the year of the dragon by the Chinese zodiac. As a nine year old, he would co star with his father in The Kid in 1950, which was based on a comic book character and was his first leading role. By the time he was 18, he had appeared in 20 films. After attending Tak Sun School, Lee entered the primary school division of the Catholic La Salle College at the age of 12. In 1956, due to poor academic performance and possibly poor conduct, he was transferred to St. Francis Xavier's College, where he would be mentored by Brother Edward, a teacher and coach of the school boxing team. After Lee was involved in several street fights, his parents decided that he needed to be trained in the martial arts. Lee's friend William Chung introduced him to Ip Man, but he was rejected from learning Wing Chun Kung Fu under him because of the long-standing rule in the Chinese martial arts world not to teach foreigners. His one-quarter German background from his mother's side would be an initial obstacle towards his Wing Chun training, however, Chung would speak on his behalf and Lee was accepted into the school. Lee began training in Wing Chun with Yip Man. Yip tried to keep his students from fighting in the street gangs of Hong Kong by encouraging them to fight in organized competitions. After a year into his Wing Chun training, most of Yip Man's other students refused to train with Lee when they had learned of his mixed ancestry, as the Chinese were generally against teaching their martial arts techniques to non-Asians. Lee's sparring partner, Hawkins Chung, states, probably fewer than six people in the whole Wing Chun clan were personally taught, or even partly taught, by Yip Man. However, Lee showed a keen interest in Wing Chun and continued to train privately with Yip Man, William Chung and Wong Shun Liang. In 1958, Bruce won the Hong Kong School's boxing tournament, knocking out the previous champion, Gary Elms, in the final. That year, Lee was also a cha-cha dancer, winning Hong Kong's Crown Colony Cha-Cha Championship. Chapter 2 Section 2, 1959-1964, Continuous Studies and Martial Arts Breakthrough Until his late teens, Lee's street fights became more frequent and included beating the son of a feared triad family. In 1958, after students from a rival Choi Lee Foot Martial Arts School challenged Lee's Wing Chun School, he engaged in a fight on a rooftop. In response to an unfair punch by another boy, Bruce beat him so badly that he knocked out one of his teeth, leading to a complaint by the boy's parents to the police. Lee's mother had to go to a police station and sign a document saying that she would take full responsibility for Bruce's actions if they released him into her custody. Though she did not mention the incident to her husband, she suggested that Bruce, being an American citizen, return to the United States. Lee's father agreed, as Lee's college prospects were he to remain in Hong Kong were not very promising. The police detective came and he says excuse me Mr. Lee, your son is really fighting bad in school. If he gets into just one more fight I might have to put him in jail. In April 1959, Lee's parents decided to send him to the United States to stay with his older sister, Agnes Lee, who was already living with family friends in San Francisco. After several months, he moved to Seattle in 1959 to continue his high school education, where he also worked for Ruby Chow as a live-in waiter at her restaurant. Chow's husband was a co-worker and friend of Lee's father. Lee's elder brother Peter Lee would also join him in Seattle for a short stay before moving on to Minnesota to attend college. That year Lee also started to teach martial arts. He called what he taught Yun Fan Gung Fu. It was basically his approach to Wing Chun. Lee taught friends he met in Seattle, starting with judo practitioner Jesse Glover, who continued to teach some of Lee's early techniques. Taiki Kimura became Lee's first assistant instructor and continued to teach his art and philosophy after Lee's death. Lee opened his first martial arts school, named the Lee Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute, in Seattle. 
Lee completed his high school education and received his diploma from Edison Technical School on Capitol Hill in Seattle. In March 1961, Lee enrolled at the University of Washington and studied dramatic arts, philosophy, psychology, and various other subjects. Despite what Lee himself and many others have stated, Lee's official major was drama rather than philosophy according to a 1999 article in the university's alumni publication. Lee dropped out of college in early 1964 and moved to Oakland to live with James Hume Lee. James Lee was 20 years senior to Bruce Lee and a well-known Chinese martial artist in the area. Together, they founded the second June Fan Martial Arts Studio in Oakland. James Lee was also responsible for introducing Bruce Lee to Ed Parker, an American martial artist. At the invitation of Parker, Lee appeared in the 1964 Long Beach International Karate Championships and performed repetitions of two-finger push-ups with feet at approximately shoulder-width apart. In the same Long Beach event he also performed the one-inch punch. Lee stood upright, his right foot forward with knees bent slightly, in front of a standing, stationary partner. Lee's right arm was partly extended and his right fist approximately one inch away from the partner's chest. Without retracting his right arm, Lee then forcibly delivered the punch to volunteer Bob Baker while largely maintaining his posture, sending Baker backwards and falling into a chair said to be placed behind Baker to prevent injury, though Baker's momentum soon caused him to fall to the floor. Baker recalled, I told Bruce not to do this type of demonstration again. When he punched me that last time, I had to stay home from work because the pain in my chest was unbearable. It was at the 1964 championships that Lee first met Taekwondo master Jun Gu Ri. The two developed a friendship, a relationship from which they benefited as martial artists. Ri taught Lee the side kick in detail, and Lee taught Ree the non-telegraphic punch. In Oakland's Chinatown in 1964, Lee had a controversial private match with Wong Jack Man, a direct student of Ma Kin Fung, known for his mastery of Zing Yikan, Northern Shaolin, and Tai Chi Chuan. According to Lee, the Chinese community issued an ultimatum to him to stop teaching non-Chinese people. When he refused to comply, he was challenged to a combat match with Wong. The arrangement was that if Lee lost, he would have to shut down his school, while if he won, he would be free to teach white people, or anyone else. Wong denied this, stating that he requested to fight Lee after Lee boasted during one of his demonstrations at a Chinatown theater that he could beat anyone in San Francisco, and that Wong himself did not discriminate against whites or other non-Chinese people. Lee commented, that paper had all the names of the Sifu from Chinatown, but they don't scare me. Individuals known to have witnessed the match include Cadwell, James Lee, and William Chen, a teacher of Tai Chi Chuan. Wong and William Chen stated that the fight lasted an unusually long 20 to 25 minutes. Wong claims that although he had originally expected a serious but polite bout, Lee aggressively attacked him with intent to kill. When Wong presented the traditional handshake, Lee appeared to accept the greeting, but instead, Lee allegedly thrust his hand as a spear aimed at Wong's eyes. Forced to defend his life, Wong nonetheless asserted that he refrained from striking Lee with killing force when the opportunity presented itself because it could have earned him a prison sentence, but used illegal cufflings under his sleeves. According to Michael Dorgan's 1980 book Bruce Lee's Toughest Fight, the fight ended due to Lee's unusually winded condition, as opposed to a decisive blow by either fighter. However, according to Bruce Lee, Linda Lee Cadwell, and James Yum Lee, the fight lasted a mere three minutes with a decisive victory for Lee. In Cadwell's account, the fight ensued, it was a no-holds-barred fight, it took three minutes. Bruce got this guy down to the ground and said do you give up? And the man said he gave up. A couple of weeks after the bout, Lee gave an interview claiming that he had defeated an unnamed challenger, which Wong says was an obvious reference to him. In response, Wong published his own account of the fight in the Chinese Pacific Weekly, a Chinese-language newspaper in San Francisco, with an invitation to a public rematch if Lee was not satisfied with the account. Lee did not respond to the invitation despite his reputation for violently responding to every provocation, 
and there were no further public announcements by either, though Lee continued to teach white people. Lee had abandoned thoughts of a film career in favor of pursuing martial arts. However, a martial arts exhibition on Long Beach in 1964 eventually led to the invitation by television producer William Dozier for an audition for a role in the pilot for number one son about Lee Chan, the son of Charlie Chan. The show never materialized, but Dozier saw potential in Lee. Chapter 2 Section 3, 1966-1970 American Roles and Creating Jeet Kune Do. From 1966 to 1967, Lee played the role of Cato alongside the title character played by Van Williams in the TV series produced and narrated by William Dozier titled The Green Hornet, based on the radio show by the same name. The show lasted only one season from September 1966 to March 1967. Lee and Williams also appeared as their characters in three crossover episodes of Batman, another William Dozier produced television series. The Green Hornet introduced the adult Bruce Lee to an American audience, and became the first popular American show presenting Asian style martial arts. The show's director wanted Lee to fight in the typical American style using fists and punches. As a professional martial artist, Lee refused insisting that he should fight in the style of his expertise. At first, Lee moved so fast that his movements could not be caught on film, so he had to slow them down. After the show was cancelled in 1967, Lee wrote to Dozier thanking him for starting my career in show business. In 1967, Lee played a role in one episode of Ironside. Cheat Kune Do originated in 1967. After filming one season of The Green Hornet, Lee found himself out of work and opened the Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute. The controversial match with Wong Jack Man influenced Lee's philosophy about martial arts. Lee concluded that the fight had lasted too long and that he had failed to live up to his potential using his Wing Chun techniques. He took the view that traditional martial arts techniques were too rigid and formalized to be practical in scenarios of chaotic street fighting. Lee decided to develop a system with an emphasis on practicality, flexibility, speed, and efficiency. He started to use different methods of training such as weight training for strength, running for endurance, stretching for flexibility, and many others which he constantly adapted, including fencing and basic boxing techniques. Lee emphasized what he called the style of no style. This consisted of getting rid of the formalized approach which Lee claimed was indicative of traditional styles. Lee felt that even the system he now called Jun Fan Gung Fu was too restrictive, and it eventually evolved into a philosophy and martial art he would come to call Jeet Kune Do, or the way of the intercepting fist. It is a term he would later regret, because Jeet Kune Do implied specific parameters that styles connote, whereas the idea of his martial art was to exist outside of parameters and limitations. At the time, two of Lee's martial arts students were Hollywood scriptwriter Sterling Siliphant and actor James Coburn. In 1969, the three worked on a script for a film called The Silent Flute, and went together on a location hunt to India. The project was not realized at the time, but the 1978 film Circle of Iron, starring David Carradine, was based on the same plot. In 2010, producer Paul Mislansky was reported to have planned and received funding for a film based on the original script for The Silent Flute. In 1969, Lee made a brief appearance in the siliphant pen film Marlowe, where he played a hoodlum hired to intimidate private detective Philip Marlowe, who uses his martial arts abilities to commit acts of vandalization to intimidate Marlowe. The same year, he was credited as the karate advisor in The Wrecking Crew, the fourth installment of the Matt Helm comedy spy fi film starring Dean Martin. Also that year, Lee acted in one episode of Here Come the Brides and Blondie. In 1970, he was responsible for fight choreography for A Walk in the Spring Rain starring Ingrid Bergman and Anthony Quinn again written by Siliphant. Chapter 2 Section 4, 1971-1973, Hong Kong Films and Hollywood Breakthrough In 1971, Lee appeared in four episodes of the television series Longstreet, written by Siliphant. 
Lee played Lee Sung the martial arts instructor of the title character Mike Longstreet, and important aspects of his martial arts philosophy were written into the script. According to statements made by Lee, and also by Linda Lee Cadwell after Lee's death, in 1971 Lee pitched a television series of his own tentatively titled The Warrior, discussions of which were also confirmed by Warner Brothers during a December 9, 1971, television interview on The Pierre Burton Show, Lee stated that both Paramount and Warner Brothers wanted him to be in a modernized type of a thing, and that they think the Western idea is out, whereas I want to do the Western. According to Cadwell, however, Lee's concept was retooled and renamed Kung Fu, but Warner Brothers gave Lee no credit. Warner Brothers states that they had for some time been developing an identical concept, created by two writers and producers, Ed Spielman and Howard Friedlander in 1969, as stated too by Lee's biographer Matthew E. Polly. According to these sources, the reason Lee was not cast was because he had a thick accent, but Fred Weintraub attributes that to his ethnicity. The role of the Shaolin monk in the Wild West was eventually awarded to then non-martial artist David Carradine. In the Pierre Burton Show interview, Lee stated he understood Warner Brothers' attitudes towards casting in the series, they think that business-wise it is a risk. I don't blame them. If the situation were reversed, and an American star were to come to Hong Kong, and I was the man with the money, I would have my own concerns as to whether the acceptance would be there. Producer Fred Weintraub had advised Lee to return to Hong Kong and make a feature film which he could showcase to executives in Hollywood. Not happy with his supporting roles in the US, Lee returned to Hong Kong. Unaware that the Green Hornet had been played to success in Hong Kong and was unofficially referred to as the Cato Show, he was surprised to be recognized as the star of the show. After negotiating with both Shaw Brothers Studio and Golden Harvest, Lee signed a film contract to star in two films produced by Golden Harvest. Lee played his first leading role in The Big Boss, which proved to be an enormous box office success across Asia, and catapulted him to stardom. He soon followed up with Fist of Fury, which broke the box office records set previously by The Big Boss. Having finished his initial two-year contract, Lee negotiated a new deal with Golden Harvest. Lee later formed his own company, Concord Production Incorporated, with Chow. For his third film, Way of the Dragon, he was given complete control of the film's production as the writer, director, star, and choreographer of the fight scenes. In 1964, at a demonstration in Long Beach, California, Lee met karate champion Chuck Norris. In Way of the Dragon Lee introduced Norris to moviegoers as his opponent, their showdown has been characterized as one of the best fight scenes in martial arts and film history. The role had originally been offered to American karate champion Joe Lewis. Fist of Fury and Way of the Dragon went on to gross an estimated 100 million US dollars and 130 million US dollars worldwide, respectively. From August to October 1972, Lee began work on his fourth Golden Harvest film, Game of Death. He began filming some scenes, including his fight sequence with 7 feet 2 in American basketball star Kareem Abdul Jabbar, a former student. Production stopped in November 1972 when Warner Brothers offered Lee the opportunity to star in Enter the Dragon, the first film to be produced jointly by Concord, Golden Harvest, and Warner Brothers filming began in Hong Kong in February 1973 and was completed in April 1973. One month into the filming, another production company, Starsee's Motion Pictures, promoted Bruce Lee as a leading actor in Fist of Unicorn, although he had merely agreed to choreograph the fight sequences in the film as a favor to his longtime friend Unicorn Chan. Lee planned to sue the production company, but retained his friendship with Chan. However, only a few months after the completion of Enter the Dragon, and six days before its July 26, 1973, release, Lee died. Enter the Dragon would go on to become one of the year's highest-grossing films and cement Lee as a martial arts legend. It was made for US$850,000 in 1973. Enter the Dragon went on to gross an estimated $350 million worldwide. The film sparked a brief fad in martial arts, 
epitomized in songs such as Kung Fu Fighting and some TV shows. Chapter 2 Section 5, 1978 Present, Posthumous Work Robert Klaus, the director of Enter the Dragon, together with Golden Harvest, revived Lee's unfinished film Game of Death. Lee had shot over 100 minutes of footage, including outtakes, for Game of Death before shooting was stopped to allow him to work on Enter the Dragon. In addition to Abdul Jabbar, George Lazenby, Hapkido Master Ji Han Ye, and another of Lee's students, Dan Inosanto, were also to appear in the film, which was to culminate in Lee's character, Hai Tien taking on a series of different challenges on each floor as they make their way through a five-level pagoda. In a controversial move, Robert Klaus finished the film using a look-alike and archive footage of Lee from his other films with a new storyline and cast, which was released in 1978. However, the Cobble Together film contained only 15 minutes of actual footage of Lee while the rest had a Lee look-alike, Kim Tai Chung, and Yuan Biao as stunt double. The unused footage Lee had filmed was recovered 22 years later and included in the documentary Bruce Lee, A Warrior's Journey. Apart from Game of Death, other future film projects were planned to feature Lee at the time. In 1972, after the success of The Big Boss and Fist of Fury, a third film was planned by Raymond Chow at Golden Harvest to be directed by Lo Wei, titled Yellow-Faced Tiger. However, at the time, Lee decided to direct and produce his own script for Way of the Dragon instead. Although Lee had formed a production company with Raymond Chow, a period film was also planned from September to November 1973 with the competing Shaw Brothers studio, to be directed by either Ko Yuan or Cheng Kang, and written by Yi Kang and Chang Che, titled The Seven Sons of the Jade Dragon. In 2015, Perfect Storm Entertainment and Bruce Lee's daughter, Shannon Lee, announced that the series The Warrior would be produced and would air on the Cinemax and filmmaker Justin Lin was chosen to direct the series. Production began on October 22, 2017, in Cape Town, South Africa. The first season will contain 10 episodes. In April 2019, Cinemax renewed the series for a second season. On March 25, 2021, it was announced that producer Jason Katari has acquired the rights to The Silent of Flute to become a miniseries, which will have John Fusco as a screenwriter and executive producer. Chapter 2 Section 6 Unproduced Works Lee had also worked on several scripts himself. A tape containing a recording of Lee narrating the basic storyline to a film tentatively titled Southern Fist Slash Northern Leg exists, showing some similarities with the canned script for The Silent Flute. Another script had the title Green Bamboo Warrior, set in San Francisco, planned to co-star Bolo Young and to be produced by Andrew Viner. Photo shoot costume tests were also organized for some of these planned film projects. Chapter 3 Martial Arts and Fitness Lee's first introduction to martial arts was through his father, from whom he learned the fundamentals of Wu-style Tai Chi Chuan. In his teens, Lee became involved in Hong Kong gang conflicts, which led to frequent street fights. The largest influence on Lee's martial arts development was his study of Wing Chun. Lee was 16 years old under the Wing Chun teacher Yip Man, between late 1956 and 1957, after losing to rival gang members. Yip's regular classes generally consisted of the form's practice, chi sao drills, wooden dummy techniques, and free sparring. There was no set pattern to the classes. Lee was also trained in boxing, between 1956 and 1958, by brother Edward, coach of the St. Francis Xavier's college boxing team. Lee went on to win the Hong Kong School's boxing tournament in 1958, while scoring knockdowns against the previous champion Gary Elms in the final. After moving to the United States, Lee was heavily influenced by heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali, whose footwork he studied and incorporated into his own style in the 1960s. Another major influence on Lee was Hong Kong's street fighting culture in the form of rooftop fights. In the mid 20th century, Soaring crime in Hong Kong, combined with limited Hong Kong police manpower, 
led to many young Hong Kongers learning martial arts for self-defense. Around the 1960s, there were about 400 martial arts schools in Hong Kong, teaching their own distinctive styles of martial arts. In Hong Kong's street fighting culture, there emerged a rooftop fight scene in the 1950s and 1960s, where gangs from rival martial arts schools challenged each other to burn up fights on Hong Kong's rooftops, in order to avoid crackdowns by colonial British Hong Kong authorities. Lee frequently participated in these Hong Kong rooftop fights, and combined different techniques from different martial arts schools into his own hybrid martial arts style. At 172 centimeters and weighing 64 kilograms at the time, Lee was renowned for his physical fitness and vigor, achieved by using a dedicated fitness regimen to become as strong as possible. After his match with Wong Jackman in 1965, Lee changed his approach toward martial arts training. Lee felt that many martial artists of his time did not spend enough time on physical conditioning. Lee included all elements of total fitness, muscular strength, muscular endurance, cardiovascular endurance, and flexibility. He used traditional bodybuilding techniques to build some muscle mass, though not overdone, as that could decrease speed or flexibility. At the same time, with respect to balance, Lee maintained that mental and spiritual preparation are fundamental to the success of physical training in martial arts skills. In Tao of Jeet Kune Do he wrote, Training is one of the most neglected phases of athletics. Too much time is given to the development of skill and too little to the development of the individual for participation, JKD, ultimately is not a matter of petty techniques but of highly developed spirituality and physique. Lee also favored cross-training between different fighting styles, and had a particular interest in grappling. After befriending accomplished national judo champion Jean LaBelle on the set of The Green Hornet, Lee offered to teach him striking arts in exchange for being taught judo and wrestling techniques. LaBelle was taught catch wrestling by feared grapplers Luthez and Ed Lewis, and notable judo and catch wrestling techniques can be seen in Lee's Tower of Jeet Kune Do. He also trained with other judokas in Seattle and California, and expressed to LaBelle a wish to integrate judo into his fighting style. Although Lee opined grappling was of little use on action choreography because it was not visually distinctive, he did showcase grappling moves in his own films, such as Way of the Dragon, where his character finishes his opponent Chuck Norris with a neck hold inspired by LaBelle, and Enter the Dragon, whose prologue features Lee submitting his opponent Sammo Hung with an armbar. Lee also commonly used the oblique kick, called the Jeet Tech in Jeet Kune Do. According to Linda Lee Cadwell, soon after he moved to the United States, Lee started to take nutrition seriously and developed an interest in health foods, high protein drinks, and vitamin and mineral supplements. He later concluded that achieving a high performance body was akin to maintaining the engine of a high performance automobile. Allegorically, as one could not keep a car running on low-octane fuels, one could not sustain one's body with a steady diet of junk food, and with the wrong fuel, one's body would perform sluggishly or sloppily. Lee also avoided baked goods and refined flour, describing them as providing empty calories that did nothing for his body. He was known for being a fan of Asian cuisine for its variety, and often ate meals with a combination of vegetables, rice, and fish. Lee had a dislike for dairy products and as a result, used powdered milk in his diet. Lee was also influenced by the training routine of the Great Gamma, an Indian-slash-Pakistani Peelwani wrestler known for his grappling strength, Lee incorporated Gamma's exercises into his own training routine. Lee demonstrated his Jeet Kune Do martial arts at the Long Beach International Karate Championships in 1964 and 1968, with the latter having higher quality video footage available. Lee can be seen demonstrating quick eye strikes before his opponent can block, and demonstrating the one-inch punch on several volunteers. He also demonstrates Chi Sao drills while blindfolded against an opponent, probing for weaknesses in his opponent while scoring with punches and takedowns. Lee then participates in a full contact sparring bout against an opponent, with both wearing leather head gear. Lee can be seen implementing his Jeet Kune Do concept of economical motion, 
using Muhammad Ali inspired footwork to keep out of range while counter attacking with back fists and straight punches. He also halts his opponent's attacks with stop hit side kicks, and quickly executes several sweeps and head kicks. The opponent repeatedly attempts to attack Lee, but is never able to connect with a clean hit, he once manages to come close with a spin kick, but Lee counters it. The fight footage was reviewed by Black Belt magazine in 1995, concluding that the action is as fast and furious as anything in Lee's films. It was at the 1964 championships that Lee first met Taekwondo master Jun Gu Ri. While Ri taught Lee the side kick in detail, Lee taught Ri the non-telegraphic punch. Ri learned what he calls the acupunch from Lee and incorporated it into American Taekwondo. The acupunch is a rapid fast punch that is very difficult to block, based on human reaction time, the idea is to finish the execution of the punch before the opponent can complete the brain-to-wrist communication. Chapter 4, Artistry Chapter 4 Section 1, Philosophy While best known as a martial artist, Lee also studied drama and Asian and Western philosophy starting while a student at the University of Washington. He was well read and had an extensive library dominated by martial arts subjects and philosophical texts. His own books on martial arts and fighting philosophy are known for their philosophical assertions, both inside and outside of martial arts circles. His eclectic philosophy often mirrored his fighting beliefs, though he was quick to claim that his martial arts were solely a metaphor for such teachings. He believed that any knowledge ultimately led to self knowledge and said that his chosen method of self-expression was martial arts. His influences include, Taoism, Jiddu Krishnamurti, and Buddhism. Lee's philosophy was very much in opposition to the conservative worldview advocated by Confucianism. John Little states that Lee was an atheist. When asked in 1972 about his religious affiliation, he replied, none whatsoever, and when asked if he believed in God, he said, to be perfectly frank, I really do not. Chapter 4 Section 2, Poetry Aside from martial arts and philosophy, which focus on the physical aspect and self-consciousness for truths and principles, Lee also wrote poetry that reflected his emotion and a stage in his life collectively. Many forms of art remain concordant with the artist creating them. Lee's principle of self-expression was applied to his poetry as well. His daughter Shannon Lee said, he did write poetry, he was really the consummate artist. His poetic works were originally handwritten on paper, then later unedited and published, with John Little being the major author, for Bruce Lee's works. Linda Lee Cadwell shared her husband's notes, poems, and experiences with followers. She mentioned Lee's poems are, by American standards, rather dark, reflecting the deeper, less exposed recesses of the human psyche. Most of Bruce Lee's poems are categorized as anti-poetry or fall into a paradox. The mood in his poems shows the side of the man that can be compared with other poets such as Robert Frost, one of many well-known poets expressing himself with dark poetic works. The paradox taken from the yin and yang symbol in martial arts was also integrated into his poetry. His martial arts and philosophy contribute a great part to his poetry. The free verse form of Lee's poetry reflects his famous quote be formless, shapeless, like water. Chapter 5, Personal Life Chapter 5 Section 1, Names Lee's Cantonese birth name was Lee Jun Fan. The name homophonically means return again, and was given to Lee by his mother, who felt he would return to the United States once he came of age. Because of his mother's superstitious nature, she had originally named him Siphon, which is a feminine name meaning small phoenix. The English name Bruce is thought to have been given by the hospital attending physician, Dr. Mary Glover. Lee had three other Chinese names, Li Yuan Cham, a family slash clan name, Li Yuan Cam, which he used as a student name while he was attending La Salle College and his Chinese screen name Lee Siu Lung. Lee's given name Jun Fan was originally written in Chinese as, however, the Jun Chinese character was identical to part of his grandfather's name, 
the Jun Bu. Hence, the Chinese character for Jun in Li's name was changed to the homonym instead, to avoid naming taboo in Chinese tradition. Chapter 5 Section 2 Family Li's father, Li Hoi Chuen, was one of the leading Cantonese opera and film actors at the time and was embarking on a year-long opera tour with his family on the eve of the Japanese invasion of Hong Kong. Li Hoi Chuen had been touring the United States for many years and performing in numerous Chinese communities there. Although many of his peers decided to stay in the U.S., Li Hoi Chuen returned to Hong Kong after Bruce's birth. Within months, Hong Kong was invaded and the Lees lived for three years and eight months under Japanese occupation. After the war ended, Li Hoi Chuen resumed his acting career and became a more popular actor during Hong Kong's rebuilding years. Li's mother, Grace Ho, was from one of the wealthiest and most powerful clans in Hong Kong, the Ho Tungs. She was the half-niece of Sir Robert Ho Tung, the Eurasian patriarch of the clan. As such, the young Bruce Lee grew up in an affluent and privileged environment. Despite the advantage of his family's status, the neighborhood in which Lee grew up became overcrowded, dangerous, and full of gang rivalries due to an influx of refugees fleeing communist China for Hong Kong, at that time a British crown colony. Grace Ho is reported as either the adopted or biological daughter of Ho Kong Tong and the half-niece of Sir Robert Ho Tung, both notable Hong Kong businessmen and philanthropists. Bruce was the fourth of five children, Phoebe Lee, Agnes Lee, Peter Lee, and Robert Lee. Grace's parentage remains unclear. Linda Lee, in her 1989 biography The Bruce Lee Story, suggests that Grace had a German father and was a Catholic. Bruce Thomas, in his influential 1994 biography Bruce Lee, Fighting Spirit, suggests that Grace had a Chinese mother and a German father. Lee's relative Eric Peter Ho, in his 2010 book Tracing My Children's Lineage, suggests that Grace was born in Shanghai to a Eurasian woman named Chung King Sin. Eric Peter Ho said that Grace Lee was the daughter of a mixed-race Shanghainese woman and her father was Ho Kom Tong. Grace Lee said her mother was English and her father was Chinese. Freda Dudley Balling said Grace Lee was three-quarters Chinese and one-quarter British. In the 2018 biography Bruce Lee, A Life, Matthew Polly identifies Lee's maternal grandfather as Ho Kom Tong, who had often been reported as his adoptive grandfather. Ho Kong Tong's father, Charles Morris Boschman, was a Dutch Jewish businessman from Rotterdam. He moved to Hong Kong with the Dutch East India Company and served as the Dutch consul to Hong Kong at one time. He had a Chinese concubine named Zi Tai with whom he had six children, including Ho Kong Tong. Boschman subsequently abandoned his family and immigrated to California. Ho Kong Tong became a wealthy businessman with a wife. 13 concubines, and a British mistress who gave birth to Grace Ho. His younger brother Robert Lee Jun Fai is a notable musician and singer, his group The Thunderbirds were famous in Hong Kong. A few singles were sung mostly or all in English. Also released was Lee singing a duet with Irene Ryder. Lee Jun Fai lived with Lee in Los Angeles in the United States and stayed. After Lee's death, Lee Jun Fai released an album and the single by the same name dedicated to Lee called The Ballad of Bruce Lee. While studying at the University of Washington he met his future wife Linda Emery, a fellow student studying to become a teacher. As relations between people of different races was still banned in many U.S. states, they married in secret in August 1964. Lee had two children with Linda, Brandon and Shannon Lee. Upon Lee passing in 1973, she continued to promote Bruce Lee's martial art Jeet Kune Do. She wrote the 1975 book Bruce Lee, The Man Only I Knew, on which the 1993 feature film Dragon, The Bruce Lee Story was based. In 1989, she wrote the book The Bruce Lee Story. She retired in 2001 from the family estate. Lee died when his son Brandon was eight years old. While alive, Lee taught Brandon martial arts and would invite him to visit sets. This gave Brandon the desire to act and went on to study the craft. 
As a young adult, Brandon Lee found some success acting in action-oriented pictures such as Legacy of Rage, Showdown in Little Tokyo, and Rapid Fire. In 1993, at the age of 28, Brandon Lee died after being accidentally shot by a prop gun on the set of The Crow. Lee died when his daughter Shannon was four. In her youth she studied Jeet Kune Do under Richard Bustelio, one of her father's students, however, her serious studies did not begin until the late 1990s. To train for parts in action movies, she studied Jeet Kune Do with Ted Wong. Chapter 5 Section 3 Friends, Students, and Contemporaries Lee's brother Robert with his friends Taiki Kimura, Danny Insanto, Steve McQueen, James Coburn, and Peter Chin were his pallbearers. Coburn was a martial arts student, and a friend of Lee. Coburn worked with Lee and Sterling Siliphant on developing the silent flute. Upon Lee's early death, at his funeral Coburn gave a eulogy. Regarding McQueen, Lee made no secret that he wanted everything McQueen had and would stop at nothing to get it. Inosanto and Kimura, were friends and disciple of Lee. Inosanto who would go on to train Lee's son Brandon. Kimura continued to teach Lee's craft in Seattle. According to Lee's wife, Chin was a lifelong family's friend and a student of Lee. James Yim Lee was one of Lee's three personally certified third rank instructors and co founded the Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute in Oakland, where he taught Jun Fan Gung Fu in Lee's absence. James was responsible for introducing Lee to Ed Parker, the organizer of the Long Beach International Karate Championships, where Lee was first introduced to the martial arts community. Hollywood couple Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate studied martial arts with Lee. Polanski flew Lee to Switzerland to train him. Tate studied with Lee in preparation for her role in the wrecking crew. After Tate was murdered by the Manson family, Polanski initially suspected Lee. Screenwriter Sterling Siliphant was a martial arts student and a friend of Lee. Siliphant worked with Lee and James Coburn on developing the silent flute. Lee acted and provided his martial arts expertise in several projects penned by Siliphant, the first in Marlowe where Lee plays Winslow Wong a hoodlum well versed in martial arts, Lee also did fight choreographies for the film A Walk in the Spring Rain, and Lee played Lee Sung a Jeet Kune Do instructor who teaches the main character in the television show Longstreet. Included in the script were elements of his martial arts philosophy. Basketball player Kareem Abdul Jabbar studied martial arts and developed a friendship with Lee. Actor and karate champion Chuck Norris was a friend and training partner of Lee's. After Lee's passing, Norris said he kept in touch with Lee's family. Dudoka and professional wrestler Jean LaBelle became a friend of Lee on the set of The Green Hornet. They trained together and exchanged their knowledge of martial arts. Chapter 6, Death On May 10, 1973, Lee collapsed during an automated dialogue replacement session for Enter the Dragon at Golden Harvest Film Studio in Hong Kong. Suffering from seizures and headaches, he was immediately rushed to Hong Kong Baptist Hospital, where doctors diagnosed cerebral edema. They were able to reduce the swelling through the administration of mannitol. The headache and cerebral edema that occurred in his first collapse were later repeated on the day of his death. On Friday, July 20, 1973, Lee was in Hong Kong to have dinner with actor George Lazenby, with whom he intended to make a film. According to Lee's wife Linda, Lee met producer Raymond Chow at 2 p.m. at home to discuss the making of the film Game of Death. They worked until 4 p.m., and then drove together to the home of Lee's colleague Betty Ting Pei a Taiwanese actress. The three went over the script at Ting's home, and then Chow left to attend a dinner meeting. Later, Lee complained of a headache, and Ting gave him the painkiller equagesic, which contained both aspirin, and the tranquilizer meprobamate. Around 7.30 p.m., he went to lie down for a nap. When Lee did not come for dinner, Chow came to the apartment, but he was unable to wake Lee up. A doctor was summoned, and spent ten minutes attempting to revive Lee before sending him by ambulance to Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Lee was declared dead on arrival at the age of 32. There was no visible external injury, however, according to autopsy reports, 
Lee's brain had swollen considerably, from 1,400 to 1,575 grams. The autopsy found equagesic in his system. On October 15, 2005, Chow stated in an interview that Lee died from an allergic reaction to the tranquilizer meprobamate, the main ingredient in equagesic, which Chow described as an ingredient commonly used in painkillers. When the doctors announced Lee's death, it was officially ruled a death by misadventure. Lee's wife Linda returned to her hometown of Seattle, and had Lee's body buried in Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle. Paul Bearer's at Lee's funeral on July 25, 1973, included Taiki Kimura, Steve McQueen, James Coburn, Danny Nisanto, Peter Chin, and Lee's brother Robert. Around the time of Lee's death, numerous rumors appeared in the media. Lee's iconic status, and untimely death fed many wild rumors and theories. These included murder involving the triads and a supposed curse on him and his family, rumors that persist to the present day. Donald Tear, a forensic scientist, recommended by Scotland Yard, who had overseen over 1,000 autopsies, was assigned to the Lee case. His conclusion was death by misadventure caused by cerebral edema due to a reaction to compounds present in the combination medication equagesic. Although there was initial speculation that cannabis found in Lee's stomach may have contributed to his death, Tears said it would be both irresponsible and irrational to say that might have triggered either the events of Bruce's collapse on May 10 or his death on July 20. Dr. R. R. Lysette, the clinical pathologist at Queen Elizabeth Hospital, reported at the coroner hearing that the death could not have been caused by cannabis. In a 2018 biography, author Matthew Polly consulted with medical experts and theorized that the cerebral edema that killed Lee had been caused by overexertion and heat stroke and heat stroke was not considered at the time because it was then a poorly understood condition. Furthermore, Lee had his underarm sweat glands removed in late 1972, in the apparent belief that underarm sweat was unphotogenic on film. Polly further theorized that this caused Lee's body to overheat while practicing in hot temperatures on May 10 and July 20, 1973, resulting in heat stroke that in turn exacerbated the cerebral edema that led to his death. Chapter 7, Legacy Jeet Kune Do, a hybrid martial arts philosophy drawing from different combat disciplines that was founded by Lee, is often credited with paving the way for modern mixed martial arts. Lee is considered by commentators, critics, media, and other martial artists to be the most influential martial artist of all time, and a pop culture icon of the 20th century, who bridged the gap between East and West. Chapter 7 Section 1, Cultural Impact Lee is credited with helping to change the way Asians were presented in American films and was largely responsible for launching the Kung Fu craze of the 1970s. He initially introduced Kung Fu to the West with American television shows such as The Green Hornet and Kung Fu, before the Kung Fu craze began with the dominance of Hong Kong martial arts films in 1973. Lee's success subsequently inspired a wave of Western martial arts films and television shows throughout the 1970s 1990s, as well as the more general integration of Asian martial arts into Western action films and television shows during the 1980s 1990s. Enter the Dragon has been cited as one of the most influential action films of all time. Sasha Matushik of Vice said Enter the Dragon is referenced in all manner of media, the plotline and characters continue to influence storytellers today, and the impact was particularly felt in the revolutionizing way the film portrayed African Americans, Asians and traditional martial arts. Quan Shaoxing Chen and Beng Hawat Chua cited fight scenes in Lee's films such as Enter the Dragon as being influential for the way they pitched an elemental story of good against evil in such a spectacle-saturated way. The concept of mixed martial arts was popularized in the West by Bruce Lee via his system of Jeet Kune Do. Lee believed that the best fighter is not a boxer, karate or judo man. The best fighter is someone who can adapt to any style, to be formless, to adopt an individual's own style and not following the system of styles. In 2004, Ultimate Fighting Championship founder Dana White called Lee the father of mixed martial arts and stated, if you look at the way Bruce Lee trained, 
the way he fought, and many of the things he wrote, he said the perfect style was no style. You take a little something from everything. You take the good things from every different discipline, use what works, and you throw the rest away. Lee was largely responsible for many people taking up martial arts. These include numerous fighters in combat sports who were inspired by Lee, boxing champion Sugar Ray Leonard said he perfected his jab by watching Lee, boxing champion Manny Pacquiao compared his fighting style to Lee, and UFC champion Conor McGregor also compared himself to Lee and said that he believes Lee would have been a champion in the UFC if he were to compete in the present day. Lee inspired the foundation of American Full Contact, kickboxing tournaments by Joe Lewis and Benny Urquidez in the 1970s. American Taekwondo pioneer Jun Gu Ri learned from Lee what he calls the acupunch, which he incorporated into American Taekwondo, Ri later coached heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali and taught him the acupunch, which Ali used to knock out Richard Dunn in 1975. According to heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson, Everyone wanted to be Bruce Lee in the 1970s. UFC pound-for-pound pound champion John Jones also cited Lee as inspiration, with Jones known for frequently using the oblique kick to the knee, a technique that was popularized by Lee. Numerous other UFC fighters have cited Lee as their inspiration, with several referring to him as a godfather or grandfather of MMA. In Japan, the manga and anime franchises Fist of the North Star and Dragon Ball were inspired by Lee films such as Enter the Dragon. In turn, Fist of the North Star and especially Dragon Ball are credited with setting the trends for popular shonen manga and anime from the 1980s onwards. Spike Spiegel, the protagonist from the 1998 anime Cowboy Bebop, is seen practicing Jeet Kune Do and quotes Lee. Similarly in India, Lee Films had an influence on Bollywood masala films, after the success of Lee's films such as Enter the Dragon in India, Diwa and later Bollywood films incorporated fight, scenes inspired by 1970s Hong Kong martial arts films up until the 1990s. Bruce Lee films such as Game of Death and Enter the Dragon were also the foundation for video game genres such as beat-em-up action games and fighting games. The first beat-em-up game, Kung Fu Master, was based on Lee's Game of Death. The Street Fighter video game franchise was inspired by Enter the Dragon, with the gameplay centered around an international fighting tournament, and each character having a unique combination of ethnicity, nationality and fighting style, Street Fighter went on to set the template for all fighting games that followed. In April 2014, Lee was named a featured character in the combat sports video game EA Sports UFC and is playable in multiple weight classes. Numerous sports and entertainment figures have cited Lee as an inspiration, including actors such as Jackie Chan and Eddie Murphy, actresses Olivia Munn and Diane Doan, musicians such as Steve Aoki and Rowan Marley, rapper LL Cool J, comedians Eddie Griffin, and W. Kamau Bell, basketball players Stephen Curry and Jamal Murray, skaters Tony Hawk and Christian Hossoy, UFC champions Uriah Hall and Anderson Silva, and American footballer Kyler Murray. Among others. Though Bruce Lee did not appear in commercials during his lifetime, Nokia launched an internet-based campaign in 2008 with staged documentary-looking footage of Bruce Lee playing ping-pong with his nunchaku and also igniting matches as they are thrown toward him. The videos went viral on YouTube, creating confusion as some people believed them to be authentic footage. Chapter 8, Honors Chapter 8 Section 1, Awards 1972, Golden Horse Awards Best Mandarin Film 1972, Fist of Fury Special Jury Award 1994, Hong Kong Film Award for Lifetime Achievement 1999, named by Time as one of the 100 most influential people of the 20th century 2004, Star of the Century Award. 2013, The Asian Awards Founders Award. Chapter 8 Section 2, Statues. Statue of Bruce Lee, unveiled June 15, 2013, Chinatown Central Plaza, Los Angeles, California. Statue of Bruce Lee, 
2.5 meters bronze statue of Lee was unveiled on November 27, 2005, on what would have been his 65th birthday. Statue of Bruce Lee, the day before the Hong Kong statue was dedicated, the city of Mostar in Bosnia and Herzegovina unveiled its own 1.68 meters bronze statue. Supporters of the statue cited Lee as a unifying symbol against the ethnic divisions in the country, which had culminated in the 1992-95 Bosnian War. Chapter 8 Section 3 Places A theme park dedicated to Lee was built in Junian, Guangdong. Mainland Chinese only started watching Bruce Lee films in the 1980s, when videos of classic movies like The Chinese Connection became available. On January 6, 2009, it was announced that Lee's Hong Kong home would be preserved and transformed into a tourist site by Yu Pang Lin. Yu died in 2015 and this plan did not materialize. In 2018, Yu's grandson, Pang Chi Ping, said, We will convert the mansion into a center for Chinese studies next year, which provides courses like Mandarin and Chinese music for children. Chapter 9 Filmography. Chapter 10. Books. Chinese Gung Fu, The Philosophical Art of Self-Defense, 1963. Tao of Jeet Kune Do, 1973. Bruce Lee's Fighting Method, 1978. Chapter 11. General Bibliography.